soft like flower dough. Sure, I know that your thumb has a melody seems to form inside of you. The flow of your body drips soft like flower dough. Sure, I know that your thumb has a story. I'm Effie Barker, we are right here in downtown. When you say we're not going away with these issues, what are those issues? Good evening, welcome to the special edition of I'm Effie Barker. Good morning, good afternoon, a good evening, all oh, wherever you are in the world. Hello and happy Christmas! It is now the 26th of December and shall I say happy Boxing Day? Or can I say it like that? Well, what is Boxing Day anyway? According to Wikipedia, Boxing Day is a holiday celebrated after Christmas Day, occurring on the second day of Christmas tide, the 26th December. Though it originated as a holiday to give gifts to people in need, Boxing Today formed part of Christmas celebration with many people choosing to take advantage of Boxing Day sales. It originated in Great Britain and is celebrated in several Commonwealth nations. The attached bank holiday or public holiday may take place on 28 December if necessary to ensure it falls on a weekday. Boxing Day is also concurrent with the Christian festival St. Stephen's Day. Now there are competing theories for the origins of the term, none of which is definitive. The European tradition of giving money and other gifts to those in need or in service positions has been dated to the Middle Ages but the exact origin is unknown. It may reference the Ames box placed in the narthex of Christian churches to collect donations for the poor. Well, today is very exciting because we have a guest who is also a Filipino-American. She was born in Hawaii but grew up in the city of Angels, Los Angeles no less. And why not? She is, after all, a commercial actress. Her name is Shirley Cook Brooks. Shirley first moved to Italy when she was in her late 30s and later moved to the UK in 2003. And she has since been living in London with her partner. Let's listen to her fun and interesting story about how she navigated her life here in the UK. And also she talks about the best and the not so good part of being an immigrant here in the UK. Let's listen to this. Hello, Shirley. Thank you. I'm, it's ha I'm happy to be here. Yeah, I'm so happy that you have agreed to share your stories. And um, the goal of this show really, uh, you know, I'm a Filipino-American as well, who was migrated here in the UK. And uh, I thought that this would really uh, give an insight to people who are already in the process or planning to go to the United Kingdom, what they would expect, you know, or to prepare them. And maybe for the people who are already here as well, uh, could learn from our experiences here. So to start with, um, could you please give us a little bit of a picture of your life before you moved to the UK? You didn't have children. Is it easier that you didn't have any children at all? Yes. Um, I didn't want children. Um, uh, I think because my mother, I, I've always felt very protective of my mother. So mm. for me, that's like almost having a child there, taking care of my mother. Mm -hmm. And I also have always wanted to travel and do things and, and study Buddhism and study all these other things. And I, yeah. You said you, you live in the Philippines as well, didn't you? Yes, but that was when I was young, from four to eight years old. So, mm -hmm. um, so all, although I remember a lot of it, still, you know, most of my life is in California. Uh, so what was it like in California? Well, I love California, still do. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a special place to me. You're near the beach, Long Beach. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I went to school there. I grew up there pretty much uh, in the suburbs. Um, a typical California kid, typical American kid, although I had a Filipino mother. So right. <laughs> typical Filipino-American kid. 
Um, what does that mean, actually, for the people who are not familiar? What is a typical Filipino American who was born in America? You're pretty much an American, aren't you? Yeah, pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's that it, it, it's a hybrid. You're you're still, you know, very much an American, obviously, but because the Filipino culture is so close knit and family is everything, even including extended family. So every weekend we, the entire family got together, all, all my aunts that were uh, around in Southern California, which were two, three other aunts, mm -hmm. um, we'd get together with their families and we'd have a huge Sunday meal. Um, <laughs> Being being Filipino American, and I, I probably with you too, we had rice with every meal. That means rice, including with pot roast. Uh, there was a, a pot of rice, even with spaghetti and chicken, and always a pot of rice. <laughs> um, half of the meals were yeah Filipina that my mother would make. The other half were American that she would make. So yeah, so even though. I had a typical California kid upbringing. I was still very close to family. And even mm. when I moved out to my own apartment, I still, you know, was expected to do family things with everyone. Mm -hmm. Very much so. And I loved it. Loved it. So maybe subconsciously, how do you define yourself more as a Filipino than an American? Uh, that's a good question. No, because mm. I'm not, I, I'm, I feel closer to the Filipino culture than American culture, just because it was the way of life at home. We didn't really know my father's family. He was fairly distant from his family. So we grew up with my mother's family, mm. but I don't feel Filipina. I, I don't feel, you know, typically Filipino from the Philippines because right. mm -hmm. yeah, living there, I'm, I'm different. And I'm different from my cousins who were born there and then mm -hmm. came to the United States when they were about 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm completely different. Yeah. Yeah, I, I asked because I just spoke with my, my best friend also is a Mexican American. And <laughs> part of what you said is exactly the same, but she kind of like identify herself more as Mexican because um she, there's really, it's really hard to define anyways what an American is because <laughs> like a, a mix of everything. But yeah, I, I um a lot of um people also who are born and raised, I, I'm sure they share the same thing as you guys do. But um, when you were still in America, you said you lived there for 35 years. Were you working or um, what, what life you, you'd had before? Yeah, yeah, because I'm, I mean, I'm in my 60s now. So mm -hmm. 35, when did I, I leave the U.S.? I lived, I'm, I left the U.S., I think I was 30, I think I was 38. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, because uh, yeah, thirty eight or thirty nine because I spent my fortieth birthday in Italy. Hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I I grew up there. You know, went to school, went to high school, uh, uh, grade school. Uh, then I went to uh, Long Beach State University. Mm -hmm. Graduated with a theater degree. Okay. Um, took a a. a part-time job I think I was waiting on tables cocktail waitressing things like mm -hmm. that okay to to get into the industry right like most actors do and then you had a busy life moving from A to B and oh yeah yeah and you're always on call that's what actresses are yep a jobbing actor <laughs> you're <laughs> you're working you know all these little jobs that you can leave at, at a moment's notice in case hmm. you get either an audition or better, the actual job. Right. So I was doing that, um, going to auditions. I was living with another actor friend. Mm -hmm. uh, we both had graduated together. And I remember thinking one day, all we had in the house was were oranges, coffee, and eggs. And I thought, hmm, I, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. Right. Um, I think this was a couple of years later mm -hmm. so uh she felt the same way 
And mm. she's, uh, she's now a teacher. She's been a teacher for years. She went into teaching. And I went into corporate America just as a secretary, executive secretary, mm. did that for many years. And then um, I'd always had a fascination with Europe, mm. mostly Italy, Greece, places like that. I also loved the UK. Mm. But I then met somebody just as a friend um, on a wrong phone call when I was working in the United States for mm. a Filipina, Filipino lawyer mm -hmm. as his uh, secretary receptionist mm. and um, struck up a, a great friendship. He invited me over to Italy, basically told me how to move there uh, to be a yoga teacher and an English teacher. And this was this was pre 9-11, so it was a lot easier back then. Mm. So I up and moved. And um, yeah, I stayed seven years there. And then I moved here to the UK because I, I met a British guy and got married mm. and moved here. Is he the, your, your current partner? No, no. We divorced years ago. Well, 20, 20 years ago. I've been in the UK for 20 years. We divorced 19 years ago. So I've been in the UK 20 years. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it was a short-lived. Right. Was okay. A very short-lived relationship. When you moved uh, already to the UK, um, did you miss your life at all in, in America? And if so, yeah. what, what did you miss about? Oh, gosh. One thing that I've always said, even in Italy, but it's funny, I missed, I missed Cali California. And I always say California, not so much the U.S., because I liked the lifestyle in California. I knew it was different from the rest of the United States. It's, it's like in its own country, isn't it? It is. It is. It's, it's very much, you know, beach and outdoors oriente orientated. Um, everybody goes to the beach. Um, I missed space and I missed the beach because the beach was my happy place. It was where I would go if I, I felt any problems. I literally would just go to the beach and just sit and stare out into the water. So, yeah, I, I missed it a lot. I missed those two things. I missed the friendliness of Americans. Oh, okay. So you find the Americans, or let's say California, is more friendly. Yes, I think Americans in general. I mean, I I tell people all the time, you know, you're standing in line in in the U.S. somewhere, people are are striking up conversations with you as you're waiting for coffee at Starbucks or, you know, buying tickets somewhere. There, everybody's always talking to each other. Um, not so here in the U.K. Not especially not in London. Mm -hmm. London, you know, very international, extremely international city, but people don't talk to you like Europeans don't tend to talk to you like like Americans do. Americans are very openly friendly. Right. Very free spirited. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. But um, did anybody treat you different? because you're American, what are the, the advantage of being American and the disadvantage of being American here in the UK? Hmm, that's a good question. Lots of disadvantages because one, you're in, you're in someone else's country. The US is not seen as a particularly good, um, overall, as a particularly good influence on other countries at this point in history. Um, I think overall, UK, meaning British people, not so much the other, like me, immigrants that have come here from Europe, but overall the British um, resent a lot of uh, the American, <clears throat> excuse me, American influence that has come into uh, the UK, and, and rightly so. I mean, I, you know, because we're American, we're used to lots of different influences in the United States because what does it mean to be American? We're all immigrants. So we're very accepting. The UK, they have these 
you know, hundreds, if not maybe a thousand year old, year old traditions in certain things. And they're slowly, they're slowly um, dying away. And a lot of it is not only U.S. influenced, I think, but, but other countries, just like every other country in the world, those older traditions are slowly dying away. And I think they resent that. So in that respect, um, uh, you get some anti-American feeling. I have never had, I'm trying to think if, if anyone said anything to me about being an American. I never have, but I do know overall, like I've, I've, I do remember some instances where friends have said offhand things about Americans, but then it's always a, well, you're not included in that, surely. You're, you're not, I'm not talking about you. So to me, it, it doesn't bother me. But like, I, again, like I said, I haven't had any any in my face anti-Americanism like I've heard some other Americans have. And I've also worked in two corporations here, two multinationals, which were both uh, originally American, um, still American corporations, uh, Universal and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there were lots of Americans in there. And I think if you were anti-American, it would show up working in something like that because you really had to liaise with with um lots of different people from all mm -hmm. over the world <clears throat> isn't that <clears throat> being passive when they make some comments about certain race and then they would say like oh, of course not you no because you're a friend you know so so it, it so because i'm friend that doesn't that doesn't i'm not included with it Do you know what i mean yeah and See, I, I'm really forgiving on those things because I see it as people just talk. Mm. You know, they, they don't, they're frustrated. People don't mean what they say 90% of the time. It's what, mm. it's what they don't say is what you need to be worried about. So when somebody says an offhand comment like that to me, yeah, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't mm. bother me at all because I I know that they they're just they're just venting a frustration, and they're not they're not trying to be um, rude or anything like that. So mm -hmm. I don't take it personally. Right, a lot of things personally. <laughs> With this resentment against American influence, and this not very accepting. Hmm. Of the this Americanism, um, and they're keeping their old traditions, and they're frustrated because it's being influenced by Americans. What do you say of that? Is that something bad to accept the new things, and just want to keep the old things? To you mean to not accept the new things and keep the old things? Yes. I is that a bad that, thing or not? No, I think. Um, I mean, good, bad, it's black and white. I try not to do these these mm -hmm. black and white things. Everything is a shade of gray. It's not a bad thing at all. I mean, the whole reason I like living here is because they mm -hmm. have these amazing traditions that we don't have. Mm -hmm. You know, these, these ceremonies that lots of time, the actual, probably the true meanings have been lost through history. So they become these these quaint things mm. that you watch going how strange but mm. you know quirky things how how fun to watch because i don't know why they still do it it has no meaning anymore but it's just it's just fantastic that they still do that they still keep mm. these time honored traditions right on ceremonies but, yeah i'm just trying to understand what is this resentment against americans is it because is you think there is some jealousy in it? I mean, I, I, I still don't get it. Why are they resenting Americans? I'm, and, and, and yes, that is true because I've seen that too. Um, I, I'm sure that at some point there is, in some instances, there is some, some envy. 
Um, because we're, I mean, we're pretty brash people, aren't we? We're mm-hmm. raised that way from day one to, to be individual and to, to speak your mind and, and to be at the forefront of things and try to be a leader. Whereas they're much more of fall in line and mustn't grumble and, and do what every, everybody else does. And I know a couple of, of my friends have actually said to me, you know, our culture, it, it really resents people that, that, that try to get ahead. Um, now, that's just one or two people, but I know some people do feel that way. Mm-hmm. So it is, it's a strange thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think for that, I don't know about a jealousy. I think maybe it's an envy that we were raised that way. And so they, they take offense at it. Right. And there's this also thing of like us, we're very open minded. We're just free spirited. We say, we express, we say what we think and we say, you know, what we we believe and how we feel. But sometimes you'd feel like all this being reserved and 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 there is this this uh, making it sound like so negative and a problem when you complain why does it make it sound bad to complain if you see something wrong you 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 would complain and there is <laughs> right this uh, they say um i heard this often like get on just get on and never complain and never explain what is that yeah, that is so, so true. I have to tell you about an incident, an incident with my ex-husband and his father and the, the father's uh, uh, girlfriend. We He's were in British. a restaurant. British, yeah. He was British. Very British. <laughs> we <laughs> were in a restaurant and uh, his father's girlfriend happened to get the gammon, which for us Americans, it's it's basically ham, right? Mm. Pineapple on it. And... Um, she ate a couple of bites and she said, I, I don't think this gammon is very good. I, don't, I think it's off, meaning mm. it's, it's mm. going bad. And of course, me, I said, oh, my God, don't eat it. You know, send it back. Take it back. Let's call the waiter over. And she says, no, 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 no. I, I don't want to make a fuss. They might get yeah. angry. And I thought, what? That was the first that I had encountered of this mustn't grumble and yeah fall in don't complain don't explain i couldn't believe yeah. it you know you wouldn't send back rancid food yeah, yeah. but and, uh, yeah they, they say it's a spoiled americans that's it that's it and they'll say oh demanding americans and rude demanding americans. and abrasive yeah and abrasive yeah but uh, i've all i've I've sent back so many things. My partner, who is also British now, he does the same, but he does it in a very, um, not kind, but he, he does it in a, a, a very British way where he'll explain mm. why he's sending it back and they'll, they'll kindly take it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's very polite. and Very polite. polite. Did you not know at all all of these things before you moved? And now that you do, uh, what are the things that you wished you had known? You think you know before you leave home about another country. You know, you research it and this and that. You don't know until you get there. And... The UK for Americans is extremely misleading because you think, oh, it's just like our culture. We speak the same language. Um, It's very easy to integrate. I'll know everything. No, no. It's like they say, um, what is is the phrase about English, right? Uh, Same uh, common language, but what is it? I haven't heard about it yet. Oh, it's 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 a very famous saying, and I can't remember it, but it's something like, um uh we speak a, the same a common language but a different something or other which is very true you know <laughs> which is very true very and, true. metaphorically as well <laughs> yes yes so um yeah it's it's still a culture shock 
Mm. Okay. 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 You were it's shocked still, culturally as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's still a culture shock. Uh, I can tell you a, a huge thing that took me years to understand was when the British say, you all right? When they <laughs> they mean, how mm. are you? Or a hi, right. how you doing? Whereas as Americans, mm-hmm. you only ask that to someone when there's something wrong. So <laughs> immediately, and I know I'm not the only one because I'm on many mm. Facebook uh, 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 groups that talk about these things. And every time a British person would say to me, you're all right. I'd say, right. yeah, why? What's yeah. wrong? So <laughs> you get really defensive. Yes. And, and they're going, well, I, I, I was just asking, you know, how are you? Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so things like that. Yeah. Was yeah. there a time that you really like a, a terrible experience that you had or like you've had a lot of, you've seen and, and, and with all the adjustments, was there a time or a worse incident that you'd say, I don't want to do this anymore? No. Mm. No. Um, I, I think the worst time that um i've had here is actually now so the worst time i have here is actually now in terms of i have aging an aging parent in the u.s mm-hmm. which is i would tell anybody if they're moving over you really have to think about that you have to think about the future you are far away from your parents and your parents are going to get old what are you going to do Mm-hmm. when they when they do get old and and they mm-hmm. need help mm-hmm. um so i'm living that now mm-hmm. um and it's very difficult very emotionally difficult mm-hmm. so yeah um but there wasn't yeah. really a time that you got frustrated and say this is not meant for me i don't want here um i would think about uh no not not the times that I thought I would move back many times mm. or or want to move back wasn't because it was negative here. Mm. It was because the pull of California and the California lifestyle to mm. me. So you really, yeah, you really so, miss that. Huh? I really miss it. I really miss it. But I I go back to California a lot for work, for family. Mm. Mm. It is very different from when I grew up there. Mm-hmm. So, you know, possibly in my head, these are just memories. Right. <laughs> you, so you've lived here in the UK for how long now? How many years? 20 now? years. 20, 20 years. years. So for the past 20 years, what would you say the most um, important, dif- important differences between the UK and the US? Oh, there are so many. Um in terms of people maybe the british are very much reserved they're not and i use quotes on this open they're not as open as americans are they're not as friendly or or um um forward as mm-hmm. americans are <laughs> i think that's the biggest thing because you come over open at, like an american and and exuberant and and we're we're passionate people aren't we yeah uh, and we wear our hearts on our sleeves and in a way we're very innocent in mm-hmm. that we, we think everybody will want to chat with us That's right not the case in the uk they're very much reserved and they look upon that that uh, type of person as uh, suspicious. They're, they're very suspicious of it. So I think it's it's a much more closed culture here. Mm-hmm. In, in Europe in general, I do have to say, in right. Europe in general. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yes, and everyone has their, I think as an American, if you move here, everyone also has their set friends that they've grown up with. Mm-hmm. Um, Lots of times they don't want to open up their life to mm-hmm. new friends. 
So right. for example, for me, most of my friends here, most of them are expats also, not Americans, but European. Mm -hmm. So I think the biggest difference is, again, we speak the same language, but it, it, it's not the same. We're not the same people. We're two different people. Mm -hmm. Yes, a lot of the misconceptions is actually for a lot of Americans who move there could share the same thought like, oh, I think, you know, it's going to be easy and um, speaking English. But how about the jobs, the job hunting for you? Was it easy for you or did you have a hard time because you're American? Uh, that's a good, yeah, another good question. I didn't and I still don't um, mm. uh, in terms of of office jobs in terms of corporate jobs I never had a problem mm. I, with acting it is an issue simply because I don't have a British accent so most of the the roles are obviously and rightly so for people mm -hmm. with British accents so I do a lot of actually um, American productions that come over here mm -hmm. looking for Americans uh, mm -hmm. to do them. Um, so I do most of those. I do a lot of commercials. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, in that respect, only because I don't have a British accent. Mm -hmm. But regular jobs, I never had a problem. The um, Did you did you lose? So, so because of that, did you decide to just give up your accent or do you still have really pretty American accent? I do consciously tone it down here. I heard you said it, literally. You you said it earlier. <laughs> I do consciously tone it down here. Mm -hmm. When I'm in California or when I'm speaking with you, I think that American accent just comes right out. <laughs> <laughs> And I can't right. Yeah. Um, when I call my partner from California, he always says the same thing. My God, you sound American. <laughs> In that way. And you said you tone it down. Why is that? Because of the the uh, some of that anti-American uh, sen uh, sentiment that mm -hmm. is here. I also um have you experienced that no no as i had said before I, you know mm -hmm. parts with friends who will say oh, right mm -hmm. you know it, um those americans are we're not talking about you surely um yeah i do tone it down a bit and it must be you know psychologically speaking it must be again just to fit in so i don't stick out like mm -hmm. a sore thumb so much right when we come back, we'll get to know more about our guest, Ms. Shirley Cook-Brooks. She will talk to us about what attracts her with the UK, the common differences between the US and the UK, the things that she missed about California, and her advices to those who are planning to move to the UK. Keep it here on Love the Beat Radio, LDBR. Music. 